everyone, welcome to Wednesdays for Women. And in Wednesdays for Women, in association with freebirds.co, we get you exceptional women who have charted their own territory, who have created history, who have written their own stories. And one such wonderful, beautiful, intelligent uh, entrepreneur, you can call her so many by so many names. She is here with me. We all lovingly call her Tukuba and she is Meghali Das. A very warm welcome to you, Meghali Ba, to, to my Hi. show. Wednesday Hello, so everyone. <laughs> it's so nice to see you and you're looking so beautiful as Thank usual. You very much. Thank you. So very warm welcome to you, Meghali Ba. You have, uh, you know, I'll tell you the first time I heard about you. This was when I had come from Shillong to Guwahati and uh, there was this friend of mine and she said, you know, there's this lady and she's the only lady in the Northeast who is working with Avon. And I didn't know what Avon was all about. And she said, it's beautiful. These are beautiful cosmetics and, you know, your lippers and your, or you can become a glamour girl with that. And I was so happy, you know, because I came to know you through that. And I knew you were such a wonderful performer. And now you say you're 23 years into this particular industry and you have created history. I have seen pictures of you where you've gone and got awards from Avon. You have, uh, you have done fantastic work. We would like to hear it from you. Okay, it's been a very smooth journey at times. Not all the time, but most of the time it was smooth. When I started Avon, it was incident your about it. You were one of them, right? Yes, yes, I was one of them. <laughs> so I had a tough time explaining to people that what is ultimately their own marketing or what is direct selling. I would really take people painstakingly take time with each to understand and understand how it works, how you work from home and look at you know now we have to work from home. That time, you know, when I was trying to explain it to people that you don't have to go out, you have to work from home, they didn't understand. And now, for the last five months, everyone's working from home. It's so uncanny, isn't it, that we are doing this interview with you. Okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, Tukuba, uh, you, have, you have created so many things for yourself. I mean, this is lovely. You, for 10 consecutive years, you have been Avon number one and the winner of Mrs. Albie's Trophy New York. And then you are in the Avon New York Global Hall of Fame for 10 years. This is wonderful. I, I, I think we need to hear this from you. We are going to get back and uh, we are actually talking to has charted history for herself. She has uh, created uh, lovely stories for herself. She was the first lady, in fact, in the Northeast who had the who had worked with the industry called Avon, the cosmetic industry called Avon. And I remember I was a very strong fan of Avon and I used to buy all my cosmetics from Avon. And uh, it used to be really fun because uh, we used to get different shades of lipstick and nail polish and eyeliners and eyeshadows. I still remember that. And uh, it was fun. And then a lot of my friends started using it. I'm still an Avon uh, I want girl, you know, you can call me that. I hardly use any other products because I got used to that. And uh, Avon has been a very good product. It has been very skin friendly. It has been very woman friendly, in fact, because they come up with new products all the time. And uh, Meghali Das, we call her Tukuba, she has, uh, she has been really, really great. Wait, she's on the line. In fact, I just... Yes, Meghali Das. Oh, say hey, she's back. Of course, I've been I've been talking about her, and uh, she's back again. Can you hear me? Can you see me now, Tukuba? Can you see yes, me? Yes, very well. Yes, oh, I can yes, now. Yes, you are much clearer, and I can I can hear you much better now. Right. Great. 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 Okay. Oh, I think we have a little reverb there. Uh, no, yes, no, no, no. I have better. Yeah, I can. Yeah, that's right. That's beautiful. So we were, Kalipa, um, uh, while you were gone, I was talking about my Avon journey and how I keep using Avon products. And I'm still an Avon girl because I remember I picked up my first stuff from you. And, you know, the, that time, I think that was 23 years back, 
maybe mm-hmm. I got introduced to you. I picked up my stuff. I still use my lippers and my eyeliners and everything is Avon. Because, you know, Avon is very woman friendly, very skin friendly. So you were talking about your journey. Sorry, we'll, get, we'll, we'll start talking from there. Yeah. Uh, like I told you, journey has been very smooth, but I did have a few rough edges. Like how I explained to people about direct selling, how I traveled all over Northeast. Okay. And then, you know, how I even fought with decoits. I think you must have seen it in the papers. This was good 15, 20 years back. I had gone to Difu for a meeting. Okay. And then I was ambushed uh, near Doboka. Mm-hmm. And they stole everything from us. But I did manage to recover some, but not all of it. It was a very bad experience. After that, I stopped traveling for a little while. But that did not deter me. I, I had to go back again. So I have covered each and every state of Northeast, including Sikkim, even West Bengal, you know, Siliguri and Calcutta and all. I've covered all of that. And as of today, I have uh, a lot of people all over and everyone's working from home. Everyone's earning. And that's the best thing. Even during this uh, COVID-19 times, when people do not have uh, jobs, we are still hiring where else everybody is firing people. So I feel this is a very, very good opportunity for everyone. People should work from home, look after the family. This is how it works. Wonderful. I think this is a very, this is a very positive thing you said that, uh, you know, people are firing, other companies are firing uh, people, but you are hiring people. I think we should say a big thumbs up to Avon for that because you are hiring people, you're making them work from home. And thank you Tukuba for bringing in a lot of uh, the, these girls under the ambit of employment because I know a lot of girls who are actually earning a lot by, by selling these products. That's right. And I don't look at anybody's age. You know, I don't think that this person is not going to make it or she is from a vernacular school or she doesn't have proper education. Anybody above 18, I approach all of them because everybody needs a little extra money. And I feel when there are two incomes in the family, you can support. And when you have, uh, you know, when women have money in their hands, they can support the whole family. Uh, I don't know. I feel women are the best policy makers. They know how to take care of themselves as well as their family. So this is very pertinent at this times because I feel a second income like today, as of today, even while I'm talking to you, you know, my checks are still coming in. Even I've not been able to work too much or during the bonds, but other states are open. So somebody somewhere is working. So naturally I'm being paid for it. So this is a, uh, you know, residual income and it's like a legacy. You know, you can pass it on to your children. This is like, an, you know, you, what you give when you write a will, you give it to your children. This is something of that sort. And when you have made a dent and when you have done so well for yourself, you never want to leave it. And I feel you should always be very, very passionate of what you do. There's no point just doing half-heartedly. You know, I love my makeup. You can see me today. I'm full of, you know, I have my red <laughs> lipstick and my matching earrings and I feel, you know, you should always be well turned out. You should be positive. You should be happy. And that's how it works. You're always so gorgeous, you know. And, um, you know, you, you've always, always been very gorgeous. And when we look up at you, I mean, you are my inspiration. I look up at you. And so today I wore these nice long earrings because I knew Meghaliba is going to be very beautifully dressed up. <laughs> basically dressed up. I said, okay, let me at least wear a pair of earrings, you know, for your show. Because I usually don't wear anything for my show at all. I said, no, today I need to dress up because she's going to look at me and she's going to say, you didn't wear this or you're, you're not looking good now. So good. Very nice. And uh, Tukuba, you have, you have a, uh, huge uh, you know a, a kind of a list of all the awards that you have gathered for yourself during this period when you were with Avon for 10 yeah. consecutive years you are Avon number one and winner of Mrs. Aldi's Trophy New York and then again you went on to become the Avon New York Global Hall of Fame you are there for 10 years and then again the Avon Platinum Executive President in 2017, the Avon Gold Executive President in 2018, the Avon Managing Directors, and you were in the Advisory Council in 2017. And then, my God, I could just keep on reading. And in 2019, you were the Platinum Business Owner in Avon. Goodness, how many more, uh, you know, feathers are you going to add to your cap? 
many more many more i'm just waiting i will just uh, take you you know i want to show you my avon awards wow can you yes, can you yes. see all these sorry can you see all these certificates this is oh, avon okay. all over yeah over okay. the years i mean i don't what have is... place to put certificates they're like right up to the ceiling lovely i hope you know you are an inspiration for many young people and i hope whoever is watching all the young people even the elderly people who are watching i hope they are inspired by your you know your works because it looks like you know with all the awards that i see it looks like you have not had a moment of respite you've been working every second i think again we got stuck megali ba are you there Uh, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. You are there. The network is a real problem these days because uh, I wish we had faster network and more reliable network so that we can have a good conversation. Yes, I think I think Bido is back again. Okay. Am am I audible? Yes, you are audible, but then it's it's coming and going. I think the previous place where you had placed your phone was much better. Okay, so should we? Wait? Okay. Yes, okay. that's much better. Yes, that's right. Absolutely, I can hear you. So, so tell us something more about your Avon journey. You know, we want to hear more about it. Okay, when I started in nineteen ninety seven. uh my son was very young so there was a big support from my husband sapon otherwise i wouldn't have been here you need family support otherwise you'll never rise in life because he really pitched in a lot bringing up joy who was uh, a little bundle of joy actually so eko digdar ni disle he was like a really good child so i could travel all over and build my business and i am reaping today because what i did you know so many years back and i feel you know when you show people or you uplift women and you show them that they can work from home without any uh, investment i would you know uh, want to say this without any investment this is very important for everyone even to open a pan shop you'll maybe need 50000 rupees but in avon you don't need any money you collect your order you you know you place your order and once your order receives by you you have to pay so you just rolling your money and once you start recruiting then there is you know you become like a leader and it carries on and on and on and you can earn up to amtint janit you know you can go right down i don't even know who is joining today and who is going to join tomorrow i can see all the time people are joining me and they are with me unless i check my genealogy i know that you know they are joining me and then i can see them buying all over india wonderful you you've got an empire for yourself you know you built, the queen has <laughs> built an empire it's, it's kind of an empire right yes. so we, we would like to see some of the pictures you've got some beautiful pictures of your awards maybe rip jyoti can help us with uh, with some of the pictures okay that uh, you you have of uh, the awards Yeah, that's Avon jewelry. Okay. And that's uh, Happy Mother's Day in Avon, which we celebrate, oh. but unfortunately we couldn't celebrate this year. Mm -hmm. And this was Melange. I think this was an award. I forget. I need to check this. And these are all the accolades you receive every time you, you know, you do well in Avon. Okay. Uh, So, uh, so I hope I hope everyone is inspired by your journey in Avon, and they are going to take it up, and they are going to actually go and take those awards themselves as well. Those young girls that you that you inspire so much, and uh, so uh, Meghali Ma, you have a huge, uh, you have a huge, uh, you know, uh, a beautiful career. It's not only Avon that you have. Uh, you know got into but you have also become the vice chairperson of picky ladies organization 
that is lovely. That is uh, thank please you. Please tell us about it. I'm sure you must be. It must be very interesting because, I, as far as I know, Fiki has some wonderful women, and the women that I have, they are amazing. One of them is you. I can see her right in front of me. Uh, we do a lot of charity in Fiki Flow. This is the ladies ladies organization, the part of a little part of Fiki. We mm -hmm. do we do a lot of social work. You okay. know, helping weavers, helping tailoring, or uh, adopting a village, or showing people how to make dhup kathi, or showing uh, you know leading ten women uh, into giving them some looms to work from home. So they'll do a lot of work, and they're doing very well. Flo is doing very well. We do a lot of charity, like for the floods, or even uh, during the pandemic, we had you know all contributed a lot of money. So we try and do a little bit, whichever we can, which way. Since we have a lot of members, everybody contributes, and then we uh, give it out to the needy. I think I think you have just uh, what you have done is an extension of your work, your social work. You started with Avon because you were already employing young girls. And then you went into Fiki. I think that was just an extension of your social work. You kind of became, you were an activist then. Now again, you have become an activist in Fiki, right? Yeah, it happens. You know, you just sort of breeze in from one place to the other. Like when I was Avon, then I started grooming and uh, personality development classes for Air Hostess Academy. Okay. So that's how you keep on, you know, I, I had to go for my skin care classes. I used to show them how to take care of their skin. I used to do it take five days classes for a hostess academy and I should teach them how to do their makeup, how to, you know, sit for an interview, what to say, what not to say and how to, you know, sit and talk and um, how to present yourself and uh, several things. So I had a five day module to work for them. And that's, that's about been like 15 years from now. Okay. So I've stopped uh, right now because of all this, but otherwise I do keep on going for my grooming classes to other places. Yes, I, I think I met you once in our college in uh, Institute of Management and Technology where you were giving grooming classes on skin care and all these things. I think I, think I met you once there and right. while, you, while you were doing that. And are you still grooming young people on, on etiquette and manners and all uh, this? I don't get to, you know, I'm... You know, I don't have much time to do nowadays, but I do uh, once in a while. I do, you know, tell them what to do and what not to do. But I'm not taking classes as in classes or going to an institute to uh, give classes now. I've not been doing it for like two, three years now. But maybe if young people uh, think of coming and, you know, doing a virtual class with you or all, maybe yes. you just I'll be most, yes. Yeah, even a skincare or a personality development or. You know, whatever you think of, I can be of help. Yes. Wow. So I hope the young people are listening and I hope uh, my team uh, from Freebirds is listening because we love uh, people who actually come in to teach. And so we would love you to be on board someday to actually become a teacher and teach young people how to do their grooming and but, how to do yeah. care. And this. This how to do your makeup, how to do your makeup, how to look nice. Oh, yes. Nice, <laughs> like you, of course. <laughs> nice, like you. <laughs> no. How to be yeah. presentable, you know, but you have to dress according to the occasion. It's not that, you know, you're going, somebody has just passed away and you're going with full makeup. That doesn't really work for you. So you have to be very careful when you're teaching them certain things. Okay. You, you okay. have to know the weather, the, you know, whether it's day or night or whether it's evening and the occasion. And what kind of clothes you're supposed to wear, you have to really know. It, it's not so easy as it sounds, but then, yeah, you will learn. But I feel that Tukubab, uh, young people need a lot of this grooming because many a times they actually uh, tend to make mistakes in what kind of dress to wear for which occasion. You know, I've seen many a times when uh, for a, a person who has just passed away, they would probably be in their denims and their t-shirts. I mean, it's better that we wear something traditional and we go to that place. Yeah. So, and something in a, you know, lighter color. You have to pay respect to the departed. So yes. you can't be gaudily dressed and you have to be sober. So these little things, you have to keep it in mind. It's, you can't wear black during the day. According to our customs, it's very hot in, you know, and sticky during summers. And you, you're not supposed to wear white at night. So it's like the few, you know, do's and don'ts when you're doing a, your classes about makeup, about dressing, about uh, 
everything else, how to groom yourself. Everybody tries. Nowadays, I think girls are very well turned out, even for boys. They really know what they are doing. Initially, when we started, nobody knew every, anything. There was no Google. There was no uh, WhatsApp. So <laughs> we learned it. Yeah, we learned it by ourselves. And then uh, what we've seen others doing it. But then we've come a long way. We've seen when there was, we've played the radio. Now we are here on the internet. So it's like we've come a long way. True. I think my grooming teacher was my mother because uh, she was. I'm tell sure. Me. And you are always so well turned out. Yes, and she she would always do that. But now I think now children are more savvy with YouTube because if they want to say what should I wear for this wedding, so they yes. they just need to type it and they get it. So it's oh. that they spoon fed so well. But I think, but at the end of the day, I would always suggest young people to come to mentors like you, to teachers like you, to grooming experts like you, because without you, without a practical knowledge, because see, YouTube is fine. They will just, somebody who is not even connected would do that. But we are connected to you. And I think young people should connect more. There should be a human connect. And the human connect, you, you get to learn more. I think that's that's really nice. I think I sh I really think young people should come to mentors like you. And if you are going to do grooming classes, I'm going to be the first one to go and say, please. You don't. Dance. You don't need any grooming. You don't need any no, grooming. I'm, yeah. I'm you know, at times YouTube may be wrong. Like the GPS, you know, they will only show you the the way uh, it has been taught to them, or it's fed into the computer. They will never take you through shortcuts or anything. Okay. So it's like that. The GPS is only. Okay, if I go to Chanmari, I have to take left and right and then. But then if I have to go to Chanmari, I don't have to take the main road. I can go through one of those, you know, gullies and reach there before time. Mm -hmm. So this is how it works when you, you know, uh, asking a computer what to wear and what not to wear. They will come with all sorts of answers and you won't even know which one to. And I know the, you yeah. won't know which the best one. So we yeah. will always say that the best person to go to is Meghali Das because she's a fantastic <laughs> mentor. And a fantastic grooming person. So we, I, I said that I'm not going to take the grooming, but I'm going to be a marketing person. I'm going to tell all the young people to come to you so that they can come look as well turned out as you and uh, well behaved as you with all the etiquette and manners and everything. So the again, you've spoken about your uh, personality development and grooming expertise. Uh, you were a secretary from 2015 to 2018. In fashion yeah. and design council. So That's right. As to Lakme Fashion Week, International Fashion Wear, Fashioner Week, and to Las Vegas, Thailand. So let us hear about this. Okay. I was the secretary of a, uh, of a society. And then uh, we uh, took a lot of people from here, as in Northeast, and we traveled all over the world. Am I audible? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. So uh, we started way back in 2013, 14, and we traveled to Las Vegas, Dubai, Thailand several times, Bangladesh, and Delhi, and we went to Let Me Fashion Week where we promoted Made in Assam. Okay. So this was the first time ever that uh, Assam was in the Let Me map. All right. Mm -hmm. So you were also in the uh, you were also the proprietor of uh, Needlecraft. Yeah, <laughs> Needlecraft is very close to my heart. You can see up. Uh, yes, I can see can that. You see this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that that's handmade by me. Oh. And uh, you know, I taught. Yes, I taught these girls how to do embroidery because hand embroidery is almost extinct. People don't do any hand embroidery anymore. Okay. So I yes. took the yeah I took this challenge, and I thought of you know teaching them how to do hand embroidery, but then I've seen girls you know they don't have that perseverance that so I couldn't contain uh, you know carry that forward. But that's very close to my heart. Even now, given a chance, even today, in fact, I started doing a little bit of embroidery on my hands. I thought I should, shouldn't lose touch because by our grandmothers and mothers that you know you should know your handwork. It's so important even today if you tell me to cut a kurta and stitch it I can do it you know. I know what to do. 
but uh, normally uh, you know designers they uh, sewing and um, stitching and cutting is not part of all care curriculum so i feel this should be included in our curriculum like like we had home science when we went school and college yes so stitching or embroidery or uh, cutting this is very important even if you can stitch you know uh, a towel or a hanky i think it's important for everyone yes i do remember my mother's sewing machine you know when she used to and she used to tell me that uh, you know stitch uh, stitch up a handkerchief yeah. or up something she used to always do that and and so i know my embroidery i know my stitching and everything so you know all this tuition from my mother has kind of helped me even now my son sometimes asks me can you stitch all this do you know all this and i said of course i know how to stitch come on <laughs> i mean they always think that we know because we on the move they think that no i i probably she doesn't know anything but then uh, we have had our tuitions with her with her parents you have had a very uh, uh, very active mother as far as i know so i i think you'd like to speak yes. about her about this yes uh, you she she really taught me a whole lot of knitting and stitching and baking and cooking so she tried her best to make me a all-rounder which i'm not you know i'm like jack of all trades like master of none i do a little bit of everything and i try and pitch in together and she really you know took a lot of care and taught us a lot of things you know a whole lot of things which you know i can't even believe that today's mothers would teach their kids because Uh, nowadays nobody knows even how to sew a button or make a button hole this is something no. very uh, small but if you ask somebody to sew a button hole i'm sure they won't even know where to go with their needle so mom has been a real inspiration for me so this way i carried it forward with all my embroidery and teaching girls how to you know make a livelihood uh we have a little village nearby where we where i stay and they used to come and work from they used to come here from from 10 to 5 and do this little embroidery and they used to get paid like a daily wage but now they have you know gone for greener pastures they've gone elsewhere to work and they think this is not really their kind of work but uh, i feel we should bring back uh, hand embroidery and knitting and this is so important to be included in the curriculum also Yes, but sometimes you know, but Tukuba, I feel that uh, people think that it's such a waste of time doing embroidery, but uh, or doing knitting or doing crochet. Still do that, you know. And I feel that it's very, uh, it's a meditative kind of an experience. Yes, you know, it's very calming to your soul when you're doing your crochet or you're doing the edgings for a hanky, or you're painting something like a fabric paint or even wall hangings or whatever. i feel this anything to do with your hands you know when you're using your hands it's very uh, calming to your soul even when you're cooking you're thinking what to put next you don't have to need measurements all the time you can cook from your heart you you cook when you don't even you're not even thinking okay suppose this masala is not there you just omit that and give something else so this is very very spontaneous you just can learn but you know as you go along you you sort of learn more things about cooking about uh, crochet about tatting uh, you know fabric painting people have you know it's like oh, fabric painting people doesn't even know it does it exist it's so sad and i don't even know how to bring it back in fact uh, when you're talking about fabric painting i remember uh, uh, just near your place we've got his and hers bhaskar does his and hers and uh, mm. he told me that he wanted some hand painted dupattas and i remember i drew krishna and i drew all kinds of things and you know i give sold those uh, dupatta that it really sold off like crazy i i did it on kurtas i did uh, and that was way back i mean i think it's more than 20 years now when i did those paintings and it was really very meditative it was very nice because i created yes, yes it's very meditative because it you're working with your hands as you're thinking about it all the time so it's like a two way you know it works both ways there's a new designer known as bhaskar he's working a little bit on fabric uh, painting and i love his work so i'd love to work with him some day very soon all the best to you i hope i hope you come up with more creativity because you're always in a creative mood and all the time wanting to do something for for other people you're not doing it only for yourself to uh, kuba i've always noticed that you're doing it for others all the time you have been a wonderful human being in doing things for other humans 
I think that's I, I try describe. my best. I try my best, but I hope you know somebody has benefited from this. We all have. I'm an Avon girl, so I still remember you from my Avon days. <laughs> I still have yeah. Avon user. So yes, I have. Uh, you have also been with Nimble Thimble. I remember you had you had started this, and it was in designing and making breast and wear. Nimble That's Thimble. Cool. Something mm-hmm. which I really love the name, and you came up with mm-hmm. lovely blouses and dresses. That's right. Yeah, I continued with Nimble Thimble for quite some time, uh, doing uh, working with Lycra, the fabric. I was in Mizoram for a month. Okay. For Avon, and that's how that's how I saw over there people were really you know stylish and they were excellent tailors. So I got in touch with some people, and then I opened uh, Nimble Thimble with them. And you know, while the going was good, it was a really good concept, and everybody loved it because nobody could stitch a lycra in Guwahati because you need a special machine for that, like a zuki right. machine. And so we did very well. And now uh, with my handloom hues, I've shifted my tailoring part also to handloom hues. Okay. Yes, we have to talk about handloom hues. You started off with handloom hues, and now you're a partner with uh, with this uh, beautiful, beautiful outlet that you have on Zoo Road. I have gone there and I've seen the collection that you have. Handloom hues has got some beautiful Mekhela sadars, and I have seen some of the beautiful women of our of of Assam. They have been using it, and one one wonderful woman who comes on YouTube, I, I I've seen her videos, and she keeps mentioning about uh, you know handloom. Yes, she's 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 one of my favorites, you know, and and she keeps speaking about handloom hues, and I really like it so much. So you have this mission, vocal for local. So we want to hear this from you. As a child, I you know I grew up in sericulture farms. Uh, as a baby, I was in uh, Difu sericulture farm. My father was in sericulture, so I have seen uh, the mulberry bushes and eating out from mulberries from a tree. Or I when we then we shifted to Guwahati Khanapara, and I could see the lupa, and I used to make them earrings. You know, lupas were green, and everybody was scared. But then I grew up looking at them, and I used to play with them, and I used to make earrings with them. You know, just put it here, and they used to get stuck. But if you look at it, it's very scary. But then, you know, when you grow up with things like this, you don't you you don't get scared. From Guwahati, uh, Khanapara, uh, sericulture, we went to Shillong over there. Also, I stayed uh, in the farm, sericulture farm in Lausuton. And I grew up, you know, within these uh, huge pine wood trees and lovely mulberry bushes. And at home, mom used to make lovely mulberry nuni, you know, those mulberry jam and jellies. So, had a wonderful childhood. And, you know, moving around from sericulture farm, I moved from one place to the other. But when I came back and married in I got you. you need to adjust your you need to adjust your uh, phone once more because your voice is breaking okay is it okay now yes yes okay okay yes now it's better yes okay okay sorry please continue so uh, you know when I was working in the fashion industry I had seen that uh, the weavers never got their due uh, somebody used to get it from the weavers and sell it at a higher price. So I came up with this idea of handloom hues where I could uh, bring in weavers and they would stay with us. We have a factory and we have 21 looms as of today. But during this pandemic, we we are not working full, uh, full on because of the social distancing. Otherwise, we have a 21 loom uh, factory where we are working with 21 weavers. And it's doing very well because we are dabbling with all sorts of new designs and old designs of what my my Aita had or my Ma had. You know, I take out those designs and start uh, designing in a new fashion. And it's uh, doing very well because we are different from others and uh, we have our own set of weavers. So nobody can really copy our designs. But once you put up in Facebook, that's a different story altogether. Then you know, there is a lot of copying. But otherwise, till it goes into Facebook or social media, we can always tell people that this is one of a kind. 
and uh, we are doing well and i'm happy because uh, we are working with ARI, which is a, a little different from what we get in Zari, uh, Guna. So, and we are also working with Gisa, which is doing very well. Both Gisa and ARI is doing very well. So, I'm very happy with Handloom Views, the way it's shaping up. Uh, it was doing very well until, uh, you know, till uh, 22nd of March. But now we are a little slow. Everybody is slow and everybody is losing money. And I always tell people, please buy local stuff instead of you know buying from elsewhere. Since we are talking about vocal for local, it's very important. You should buy tholua. You know, you have to have tholua exactly. food. You have to have you know tholua kapur. You have to wear what's handloom, what I'm wearing. So please, uh, you know, if you uh, support uh, handloom weavers, uh, there'll be no dearth of new things and new innovations, and we can make a mark for ourselves. Since we are planning to boycott, um, you know, foreign goods, it will be such a good idea if everybody wore handloom. Lovely. I think I I have visited your uh, handloom queues and it has got a fantastic collection. And I will request whoever is watching us right now, please make a visit after this COVID thing is over. You must go to handloom queues because you have also got something fantastic. You also make those beautiful masks, which are, you know, which fit into the, I have seen those masks that you had put up on Facebook where yeah. my, you have, you take a photograph of my face and then you make those masks according to me. So I'm like smiling all the time. Even when I'm angry, I'm smiling. And then, that's, you know, so that's, that's really a beautiful, uh, innovative thing that you have done about the masks. And I must visit, I must take up one of those masks, really. Yeah, please do that. Yeah. I'll leave a picture of yours and we can print a mask for you. Okay, so people, if you do not know, Handloom Hues actually makes beautiful masks. So if you are going to use some of those masks which you don't like and which is very, you know, um, it's not stylish, you can go to Handloom Hues and you can take a picture. Baidu is going to take a picture of this portion of your face and then make it according to your size. And, you know, you have this beautiful and you don't have to look as if you're wearing a mask. It's look, it'll look as if it's part of your face. So I really yeah. like innovation so much i have never seen it anywhere but in handloom cues so it's really really lovely and uh, what what are the stories are you going to tell us megariba any other stories that you have that uh, we would love uh, to listen to? stories are so different you know i'll tell you one story about uh, a home couple who came to us and she gave me the full privilege of designing for them and i really had a really good time designing you know, right from their brother-in-law to the groom, to the mother, to the bride. And I made this lovely uh, kamar buns for them and headgears to match. I had a great time, you know, designing for that particular wedding. And recently there was another wedding where we normally wear white. Uh, you know, Asmi's weddings, we normally wear white. But I dabbled with this red and it turned out so well. Uh, if you go to my Facebook timeline, you'll be able to see a model wearing it. Uh, I think wearing, we should yeah. some of those pictures. You have some lovely yeah, pictures. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Yes, yes let's do Then that. I can let's talk. See. Yeah, let's see yeah. the picture. Yes. Okay, this is in Vancouver. If you can hear me. Yes. Yes. 2000, yeah, 2019 in Vancouver. I'm very grateful to Zubin and Gorima for walking uh, as the showstoppers for me. Okay, those are your, your designs. That's right. Three of them are wearing. Oh, I, I mean, two of them are wearing and so am I. Okay. Wow. This was a finale and just I'm bowing down to everyone because I had a total sellout of all my Meklas Adors in Vancouver. It was wow. a great, yeah, it was really great. And this is me. It says 40th uh, Ohom or SM yes. Convention. Yeah. Yes. It was 5th of July. I was supposed to go again uh, to LA. Yeah, this okay. year, but yeah, I couldn't make it because of the pandemic. They had to uh, cancel their program. Okay, maybe it's going to happen next year. Yeah, I Great. hope so. Yeah, this is uh, the couple wearing okay. uh, handloom hues. Lovely. Yeah. This is another lady from uh, USA. She's wearing one of our designs. She's wearing a kesa pat. Okay, such a lovely combination. Yeah, it, it's a uh, citrus green and shocking pink. This is another one. Oh, lovely. I, I want to talk about this lady, Nilima Baido. Okay. Uh, she's 
doing her bottle green with she's 71 years old and mm -hmm. now she's way 72 she walked uh, for me on the ramp we had a real people show where uh, we didn't have any models i just picked up everyone uh, uh, from all over who were coming to the convention and i you know we did a makeup for them and taught them how to wear uh meklasador how to drape them nicely and she was one of the oldest models and i loved it i felt she was so sporting lovely so she's one yes this is a beautiful color yeah she's from canada she's from uh yeah, she's, uh, I forget her name. Uh, we also do, uh, you know, mm, these kind of uh, Western wear. It's known as sustainable fashion. What okay. we do is, uh, what we do is, normally when people get married abroad, after a certain time, they don't wear their necklace adores anymore. Mm -hmm. So they bring it to us, and I sort of design them in such a way they they can wear it for their Western, uh, you know, occasions like maybe a luncheon or a tea party. So I have done a lot of sustainable fashion because I think Meklasador is an heirloom which you should carry on from generations to generations instead of just keeping it away. So I've made dresses, uh, gowns. Uh, uh, this is like a little straight uh, skirt with a, with a jacket, yes. So I try and make different innovative ideas uh, so that, you know, people, yes. Uh, this is, yeah, this is Nuni cotton. and the uh, the paris in in the chest and you can see how i've draped it so that's so and, you are, i guess you must uh, be talking better yes well i think i was judging one of those uh horosity puja okay yeah <laughs> i was judging horosity puja beauties so we had to be on the stage and you know they were they had already picked up a lot of girls and we had to choose from there it was nice it was fun because normally i do you know as judging when i go uh, go to either ita much or elsewhere but this was judging uh, from the internet and then uh, doing it uh, live it was really unexpected it was really it turned out very well wonderful you're looking so beautiful yeah, this is a Patmuga set, a skirt, a jacket, and a little dopatta. Okay. This is one of the awards. I can't remember. I think uh, this is one of the awards I received in Etihad. Okay. But I can't remember as of now. I have received quite a few this year. And this is. Uh, I do not. Another award. Oh, you here. You have yes. You mentioned that this was the Biju Fukon recognition. Oh, that's right. Yes, Biju Fukon recognition award. Twenty twenty. This year. Yes. Yes. This is twenty twenty. This is also another award. I think this was from Royal. Okay. This is Biju Fukon the award itself. Okay. A prize position. I knew Biju Pukon as a child. Okay. Uh, when my grandmother in uh, Golaghat and he used to come, he used to shoot for a movie in Golaghat. And mm -hmm. that's how I knew him. And then to receive an award, uh, you know, after him, it was really a great experience. These are some of our designs. Okay. Wow, great. I, I really enjoy everything that you do because uh, you have been a role model for me. I have seen you since I was a little girl. I, I call myself a little girl because that was the first time I came into Guwahati. And I That's right. You are a little girl. Actually, compared to me, you are a little girl. My son is 26 years old. So you are a little girl. <laughs> yeah, okay. I still consider myself to be 16. So I'm still a little girl, you know. Even I don't think myself as old. You know, yeah. I... Yeah, if you feel old, then you'll you'll be old. I feel you should just carry on and that, and be yourself. You know, just be happy. 
But I, I, I have to mention some of the other awards that you had received. Apart from the Vijay Fukan Recognition Award in 2020, you also got the Indian Chamber of Commerce Award for Women Entrepreneurship in 2020. And again in 2020, you got the Ohom Ujjabata from Prohelika and the Prague Prerna Award for Women Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurs in 2020. All in 2020. Wow. This All is 20. like... And no, that's, only, that's only till March 22nd. Okay, that's only till March 22nd. It's, we still got a long way to go and we still got yeah. many awards to pick up for Megaliba. My God, this is going to be amazing. I'm sure 2020, I, when I started on the 1st of, uh, the 1st of January 2020 and I said this year is going to be the year of extreme possibilities. Extreme possibilities. Oh. So I think for you also, I, I pray and I wish and I... I have this deepest desire in my heart that you know we get to see more and more awards that Megaliba is going Thank to you. pick up and she's going to look her gorgeous best in her in her designs. And uh, uh, I, I want you to say something to the young people before you leave because they are watching you right now. And you have had a beautiful journey till now. You have so many more stories to write. And uh, till now, what is that one thing that you want to tell the young people? Uh, whatever you're doing, whatever, you always should give your best shot. You know, you should carry on doing the same thing over and trying it over and over again. Don't leave it halfway and, you know, go and join something else. Once debt is settled, you can try and, doing, you know, try and do something else. But once you give a certain amount of time to a particular business, that is really going to work for you, which has happened in my case. I have given so many years to Avon. You know, look at me now. In fact, yesterday I got a lovely news that I'm going to Maldives with my son because of Avon. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> a, yeah, it's not official, but yes, I think I have qualified. So that's really nice. So I feel people should, you know, carry on doing whatever they do best. And um, that's it. I feel nowadays kids... Uh, they are so, uh, they don't have patience. They don't have patience. They want to be uh, millionaires overnight. It doesn't work like that. You have a lot of blood, sweat and tears go into this. Like I said, I fought with Decoit. And there are several other things, you know. It takes a long time. So I feel if you just carry on doing whatever you're doing and work from home. And if you want to join Avon, I think you should because uh, it's a very good income. And I wouldn't have earned so much anywhere else. And then I, you know, how I diversified to my handloom. And I don't know what future holds for me, maybe more. Let's see. Fingers so, crossed, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Yes, Ooh. fingers crossed. First. And uh, I'm sure you would have, because of your consistency, what you had said to the young people is to be consistent. I'm also going to take that message deep into my heart because sometimes I tend to, you know, waver. But I don't waver. waver. <laughs> don't waver. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to take this message from you, a very positive message that you have given us. And you spent so much time with us today showing Thank your you. products and your you've charted this beautiful journey, told us this beautiful story of your life. And there's so much more that we need to read from the book of Meghalidas in the coming days. And we want to hear more beautiful stories more creative things coming up in your palette, I'm sure. And uh, I hope this COVID thing goes away fast and we're going to... I go hope so. Me and we're going to clap for you for those awards that you're going to get. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hoping for much more. Thank you. Meghaliba, thank you so much for coming on to my show. Wednesday. And uh, it has been a privilege. It's been an honor and a total, total happiness moment for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs>